want to mention a little bit about is a little bit about is units. Units and vector and scalar consistency. So let's talk a little bit about that. I'm giving you some general things here that are going to be helpful for you throughout. Uh, one thing that is helpful for units here, like for example, if we go to the kinetic energy, back to the kinetic energy definition. Kinetic energy is defined as half mv squared. Okay? So what are the units of kinetic energy? So what you can do when you ask the question like this is you can say, okay, what are the components of the definition of kinetic energy? You have mass, you have velocity squared, right? So take these components, you go a kilogram, in the matrix system will be kilogram, then uh, meters squared per second squared, right? Velocity is meter per second. So that's it, that's the units of kinetic energy, right? Then the next thing you ask is, is there an abbreviation for that? A lot of times the units have a certain abbreviation and usually it's given in honor of a famous scientist who did work in that field, okay? In this case, does the kinetic energy have an uh, um, abbreviation? Anyone know? Joule, yeah. It's named after the famous scientist Joule who did a lot of work in energy theory. So this is named the Joule. Okay. How about the units of force? F equals MA. Now notice it applies both to definitions and theorems. Okay. You could do unit, this is called unit analysis, analyzing the units of the formula or definition. The units of force would be kilogram, uh, and then this one would be meters, the units of acceleration. Well, what is the units of acceleration? So you go to, over here to definition of acceleration, which is going to be V. So V, what, what, what is the units of V? Meter per second, time is second, so meter per second squared. Okay, so you put over here meter per second squared. Okay. So that's the definition of, that's the unit of uh, force. And does that have an abbreviation? And it's named after Newton. Well, it happens to be Newton's second law. Might as well name it after the guy. He came up with the law. So it's Newton. Now, interestingly look, if you look at the Newton and the Joule, what's the only difference between them? What's missing in here that's not, uh, uh, that is in there? Just one meter, right? So can we somehow come up with either a formula or a definition? that somehow connects force and kinetic energy, okay? And the answer is yes. There happens to be a formula or definition that connects this with this. The definition is W is defined as force times distance. Work is defined as force times distance. Now, why did they define such a thing? Well, it kind of made sense. So when you apply a certain force to an object, okay, when you apply a certain force to an object, and you carry the object a certain distance, you're doing something to it. So let's just happen to call it work in this case. It doesn't matter what you call it. Right? You're applying a force, and you're dragging it a certain distance. So force times distance. What is the units of that going to be? Well, it's going to be kilogram meter per square, so it's going to be unit of kilogram meter square over second square, right? 
that happens to be the same as the units of kinetic energy. So do you think by applying the work on an object, I'm going to change its kinetic energy? If I apply enough work? The answer is yes. As a matter of fact, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Work has the same units as kinetic energy. So, here comes the work energy theorem. Work is changing kinetic energy. Are they the same units, work and kinetic energy? Yeah, work is Newton times meter, which is kilogram meter square per second square. Well, that one happens to be also equal to joule. So what's the whole point of this, what I'm saying? is that by just doing unit analysis, just by seeing the units, we're able to make sense out of the work energy theorem. Work is changing kinetic energy. If work is defined as Newton times meter, and that has the same units as kinetic energy, then the work energy theorem is no longer any, it's, all, it's almost logical. It's not a, this big, huge thing. It's not a surprise to us, you see? As a matter of fact, in some cases, unit analysis can be a way for you to check your answer on the test, to check to see if you got the answer right. Okay? Let me give you an example. Well, I'm just going to throw one up top of my head. So let's just say you are doing a problem and it was, it was asking you to do a certain calculation without numbers. It was just variables. And it was asking you to find, uh, let me give you, a, I'll make up something here. Uh, it had a certain uh, block here. And then there was, uh, it was tied to another block. And then there was another block here. You were given the M1, M2, and then someone was dragging this with the force F. And then the, this guy dragged, uh, somebody dragged this uh, from here, a distance D. So you have the M2, you have M1, the natural tendency of this system is to go down, right? But then someone comes along here, applies a force F for a distance D, and then this guy goes up. So the question says, find the acceleration of the system in terms of the variables F, M1, M2, and D, right? So uh, find the acceleration of the system. So suppose you go through this calculation. Uh, right now, my goal is not to show you how to do the problem. My goal is just to show you the final product. If you suppose you do it and you get this kind of an answer. kind of looks like a crazy answer. D over F. Can you, can you do some unit analysis on that to see if you're right? The answer is yes. You know, you could do some unit analysis to figure out if you're on the right uh, track. Uh, this is going to be kilogram squared plus kilogram or a kilogram cubed times meters over Newton. And that's supposed to be units of A, which is meter per second squared. Right? Is that going to work out? Just in terms of units? Well, uh, Newton is a, uh, is a abbreviation for kilogram meter per second squared. 